Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Dina and today I have a very different type of video for you. This is one I'm doing um, to talk a little bit about how I have organized my stash. I decided this week that I needed to go through um, everything I owned and organize it in a way where I know what I have um, before I go to my StitchCon retreat because I will be doing a little shopping there and I don't have a, a local needle workshop here so um, I tend to have to order everything online and I will I would be here with everything to check and make sure I don't have it already or and I tend to order just the things I need right at that moment I don't get to, to um, purchase things for the future so I'm going to be doing some of that. I've been saving up my money, I've been saving up my Stitch from Stash dollars, and um, my husband has indicated he's gonna give me some money um, as a gift to go and enjoy. So um, I felt like I wanted to get a better handle on what I had. And I've been collecting cross-stitch patterns and um, kits and things for many, many years. Um, so I went through everything that was a pattern or a kit. I didn't go through all my magazines and books because they're sort of self-contained and I go looking through them on occasion for um, something specific that I'm looking for, for a piece, but um, they're more like my reference library. They're not my gotta do this right now. If they, if I get a magazine that has a a pattern in it that I want to do I put it in a different area in my stash um, so here's what happened and I, I thought I would share it with you in case you're looking for ways to uh, organize your stash and get a little more control over what you have so what I did is I first looked at everything I had and I put it in categories I put uh, holidays together, you know, all the Christmas together, all the Halloween together, that sort of thing. If it was a seasonal piece, autumn, spring, winter, fall, I put those together. If it was um, something that was themed like sewing or cross-stitch theme or travel or a sampler, I put those in categories together so that I would have like things uh, with each other. That was my first sort, so I could see what I had. And then I just looked at each piece, and I decided, am I really gonna stitch this? Do I still like it? Does it still fit my decor? Is it something that if I had to pick to spend hours and hours of time on, do I like it well enough that I will actually stitch it? Because if not, somebody else will very likely be looking for that piece and I could share that with someone else. So I have now an entire stack of kits and patterns that my taste have changed or my decor has changed or I've stitched a piece that is so similar in nature that I don't want to stitch it again because it would just be too much alike. So I've put those aside and those are going to become giveaways and celebrations on this channel. So now I was left with everything that I would like to stitch. I decided then to organize it um, even further and because I'm committed that I would like to stitch it, I went through my fabrics and I put a piece of fabric with every project except three. And that was because I didn't have the fabric to go with them. So that helped me get started on a shopping list. Now in my lap right now, I have the bulk of my uh, patterns that I would like to start within the next year or two or three. I mean, pretty, pretty soon down the road. And this is it. It's huge. It looks like a big mania bucket or something. <laughs> but I wanted to share it with you because organizing it the way I did this is manageable. I can look through this and pick something every time I have an opening to start something new. I don't have to go in all these different places in my closet or in, you know, through different drawers or 
boxes or whatever. It's all right here, and this is going right in my craft closet when we get through talking. So I wanted to kind of share with you a few things that I did so uh, you could um, either adapt these ideas maybe for your stash or, um, you know, hopefully, or even give me some suggestions for ideas for improvements down the road. So, you know, I would appreciate that too because I like to be well organized. My collection of project bags has evolved over the years. When I first started collecting project bags, I was purchasing bags from people online. Then I did uh, make some of my own bags with Vana's tutorial. Thank you again, Vana, for all you do to teach us uh, all your wonderful skills. And then the vinyl front bags came out. Anyway, um, so I wanted, I mentioned that simply to say you can use whatever project bags you have. You just may have to adapt a little bit. So this was one of my first adaptations that I did for organization. I bought a um, box of these little name tag holders. They're pin-on. And so that way I can pin them right onto my bag because I can't see what's in here. But anyway, that lets me know that this project bag is holding Thankful Owl. And I don't have to unzip it and look in to see what it is. That's why I do that. Okay, so um, I have everything in here either in a project bag or in a Ziploc bag, for instance. These are kits. These are Mill Hill kits. I have them in a big Ziploc bag because they're already packaged and um, it wouldn't hurt them to be sitting in that Ziploc bag for right now. I went and ordered a pack of 10 of these online. These little wire mesh ones um, to help me in this um, organization. Uh, because project bags can get a little costly and I didn't I didn't want to buy a project bag for everything because my intention is To swap things out as I finish something I can use that project bag for my new project So these are more storage, but anyway, I um I have these in Groupings just like I told you I have my Christmas stuff together in the back I have put them in order of the season so they, you know, they start that way. I, I pulled this one out of the fall to show you the tag on it. But that's kind of how I have this set up. So now this will sit on the shelf in my closet. And it's, you know, easy enough to grab and move around. So this is what I will pull from when I'm planning my starts for next year. However I decide to do that. And when I'm planning mania and everything else, it's all right here. Now, I'll set that down so I can talk a little better <laughs> without trying to hold it. So what did that do for me? Well, it cleaned out my stash of anything that I'm probably not going to stitch, and now I can start recirculating that. It also helped me clean out my fabric stash because I have every one of those with a piece of fabric that I want to do with it. And now I am able to look at my fabrics and decide, what am I short on? What do I want to have in my stash for those? I'm gonna do a start for a gift for someone or I'm gonna need an exchange because I don't have that planned. I don't have something you know, put over to the side here for an exchange because you don't know what you're exchanging yet. Um, so I do like to keep a little bit of fabric on hand for those types of things. And I've depleted my fabric quite a bit by pairing it up with this. Now, I don't go ahead and start mine for one reason. And that is, it's obligated in there right now, but there are no stitches in it. And that means if I change my mind and I want to do something else, that piece of fabric is readily available and I don't have to frog anything out. I know a lot of people like to do um, everything, get it started before while it's sitting in their stash. And I don't because I am a, I'm a project stitcher. So everything I start, I want to finish. Um, and so if I, once I start it, I feel responsible for it. I feel like I need to be working on it. So I can't just go in there and start all this. It would not work for me where it might for you. 
Uh, and that might be something you want to do. That might be a fun thing for you to go through your whole stash and put a start in everything. Make that your year of starts. Um, it just wouldn't work for me. So you have to learn what kind of stitcher you are. You have to learn what makes you happy. This is your hobby. You do it your way. Um, this is how I do it. <laughs> I just like to be organized. So I have that organized now. I found out there were three patterns that I really want to do still that I don't have fabric for. So my first three items on my shopping list when I go to StitchCon will be fabric for those three projects. So I've written down the stitch count. I've written down the size fabric I think I'm going to need for the stitch count I think I'm going to get. Um, so I don't have to stop and calculate that unless I decide to do something different. And uh, I've gotten even wrote down uh, some ideas of the colors of fabric that I might want for that project. Um, and that way I'll take it with me. The other thing I did um, is I went through and analyzed a little bit of what these patterns represented. Because as I'm shopping at um, keepsakes, I would like to know what kind of patterns I might need to look for to help round out my stash. So I thought I need to know what I have before I decide where am I short? You know, where do I have needs if I want a good well-rounded stash where I could stitch on just about anything I needed. But um, in my cross stitch spreadsheet, I've actually included the name of the project and the designer, and I've put the stitch count in it. Now that may seem a little over the top, but the reason I did that is because this pairing of pattern plus fabric doesn't have any stitches yet, there's always the potential that I might take a piece of fabric out of one project and use it for something else that I feel like it would better suit as I go. And having the stitch count in my record makes it very easy for me when I'm out shopping to just say, oh, this fabric would be perfect for that. I wonder how much I need. And then I've got the stitch count. I can figure that out very easily. So I put it in there just so I would have it. I thought it was a, a pertinent piece of information that I might could use down the road and save me some heartache. So that's what I've done. Um, since then, I have, uh, I have all my fabric sorted by count. So I have a storage bin where my fabric can lay flat, just lightly rolled or folded over, not a hard creased fold. Um, some of it's already that way because it came that way in a package. But I have um, a big tote, it's about this deep, for my fabrics. I have my 32 count in one, I have my 28 count in another, and I have my Ada, all sizes of count of Ada. I have that in another tote um, because I still have uh, a bit of Ada. I use it for different things. I stitch on lots of different things. I stitch on even weave and linen, and I keep them together. Um, I just put them by count size. That's what's important to me so that I can calculate how much fabric I need based on that count. It doesn't matter to me whether it's even weave or, loop or um, linen. I just wanna make sure I know what count it is. So I keep those together. Anyway, um, doing the fabric, uh, some of it didn't have information on it anymore because it's older, it's been there a while. And, um, so I wound up having to figure out what count it was. And the easiest tool I have ever seen to do that with is a fabric gauge. And this is what it looks like. And basically what you do is you count 10 threads, not 10 stitches, 10 threads. And I put a pin in it, just a counting pin. And I line, you line up this straight line with your edge of your fabric and you look across here one of these straight lines to where your pin lines up and so if your pin lines up right here that's 32 count fabric if it lines up down here that tells you 20 count fabric 
it's very quick. You count 10 threads, you put this there, you see where the pin hits, you know exactly what your fabric is. I love it, it's been great. Um, this was gifted to me, um, but it is from yarntree.com, yarntree.com, and it's a fabric gauge, and it uh, you can use it up to 40 count. Sorry you guys that use the really, really tiny stuff, but this goes up to 40. So I think that's very helpful. Um, so I wanted to share that with you because I did use it quite a bit uh, on uh, my fabrics that where the uh, tag, you know, had fallen off or something. That, so you didn't know what count the fabric was. Some of it, I won't know the name of it because I don't have a tag on it anymore. And usually that was more on remnants. When I have a remnant that I cut off of a piece, I try to write on it, um, on a little piece of paper, what the, the fabric name is and the account. And I put a sewing pin, you know, straight pin in it. Um, but every now and then those come apart. And so I don't have them. So they're mystery fabrics as you call them. <laughs> anyway, so that is what I did to go through my stash and um, you know see what I had. And then with my recent purchase of the new DMC colors, the, the, the one through 32 or 35, whatever number it goes to, I think it's 35, um, that will complete my DMC other than the Etoile, which I'm not gonna get unless it's called for because they're very expensive. And I don't know how many times I'll be using sparkly thread. I use them rarely because I want them to be unique and different. But um, I did want to complete my DMC collection. So I got that done. I'll be bobbinating that today. And that will complete my stash uh, storage uh, revamp. <laughs> now, my magazines and my books, I, I have not done anything with them. They are together. I have a section in my stash closet that has all my books together. And I have two big magazine holders on my desk over here that you can see. There's one right, right there um, that I have my magazines in. And I have them sorted by type of magazine, like the name of the magazine, but in seasonal order. So. I try to keep the each type of magazine together simply because um, they have the similar styles. You know, they have a style that they do. So I'll, I'll think of something I wanna do and I know which style magazine I'm looking for. <laughs> I'll go look through them first before I look through the rest of it. Um, but I haven't gone through them lately to see if there's any that I've stitched everything in it that I want to stitch. And when I do that, I pass the magazines along uh, usually at the freebie table uh, at a retreat to let someone else get it um, because I won't be stitching anything out of it anymore. So um, I, haven't, I haven't gone through those right now, but I feel really good about knowing what I have and what I might need when I go shopping, but most importantly, where I won't duplicate myself. I won't buy the same thing that I already do because I liked it the first time. You know, now I'm gonna like it again. So I hope that gave you some ideas. Um, my storage is not fancy. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's functional, and I think that's helpful for me. Um, but um, I just felt the need to, to go through it and see kind of what I had before I go on a shopping spree. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will uh, get to my bobbinating now, and I will talk to you again soon. Happy stitching. Hello, everyone. This is Dina. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of June, and I'm here to give you an update. As I mentioned in an earlier segment, I decided to work on my whips between now and when I leave for Mania um, once I hit homework uh, to start working on my whips that are the larger ones or the more difficult ones that I don't plan on taking with me to Mania. I also am looking to see what sows that I'm supposed to be 
uh, part of, uh, in addition to the School of Magical Stitches or the 30 Minutes a Day group that give us prompts. And one of those sales occurred today. It actually has been going on for three days and I finally got to participate today. But it's Cross Stitch Finish Line and it was a mirror sale so you could work on any Mirabilia that you uh, have. And currently, my Mirabilia is Seaside Kingdom. This is the one I'm working on. So I pulled it out today and I decided that I was going to continue working on the little girl's head. I had been working on trying to make sure that the children were gonna fit about the right spot and I had gotten started on her head and then counted down to make sure her body was gonna land in the sand. So today, I knew I didn't have a whole lot of time, but I wanted to work on it. So this is what I did today. Look at that sweet little girl's head. And that's before back stitching, and I still haven't finished. This is so confetti heavy, oh my goodness. But I have two little pigtails that I have to do in her hair, and then we'll start her back and go down from there. But I have her sweet little face stitched. I just don't have it back stitched yet. But you can see how our hair's parted down the middle and it's gonna be in those little pigtails and here are the big bows that are tied around her pigtails. And there is a, a pretty good bit of back stitching for this piece, it has very little back stitching, but there's a little bit here in her head. So once I go on down and finish, you know, her, um, her hair and everything, I will fill in the castle around her so I can go ahead and backstitch her and then she'll really pop. Here's my thought going forward. I have been stitching all along and filling in as I've gone, but now I'm about to get down to the children. So I think I would like to stitch her and the doorway in the castle and the little boy. In other words, I'm gonna stitch everything that's called to be stitched on the pattern first. And I think I'm gonna save that fill in now till the very end because I know it's gonna work. I know the blue isn't gonna show through. Where you see blue is where we're gonna have beads. So I would like to really work a little while on getting the little boy and the little girl done. And then I can come back and finish you know, filling in the castle. So I'm just gonna stitch what's called for first. And then I'll go in and it'll be easy fill in, I think, after that. And I can then finish the uh, back stitching. But that is my Mira Sal participation. It doesn't look like a lot, but I've been working on it for a couple of hours or more. So um, I'm pleased with it. I can actually see her little face. And I like that a lot. So that's my Seaside Kingdom. I'm hoping that it'll come along a little bit quicker as I start working more on the uh, prominent parts uh, here of the little boy and the little girl. And um, I'll be happy to share it with you every time I do. Thanks for letting me do that. I hope you all uh, will have a um, lovely rest of the week. I have a wedding anniversary tomorrow. Uh, my husband and I have been married for a very long time. <laughs> uh, we got married quite young and uh, so we are celebrating our 43rd wedding anniversary tomorrow and uh, we're going out to lunch together at a very nice restaurant and just spend the day together. So I don't know that I'll get any stitching tomorrow at all but it'll be worth it. And then um, Friday, our son has uh, let us know he's gonna hopefully get off work on time and would like to have dinner with us. Just, you know, something easy and quick just we, so we can just sit and visit. And I'm looking forward to that too. Um, and then this Saturday is a stitching meetup. Oh, I'm so excited. I almost didn't say anything about it because I've been so excited about StitchCon. I've been planning so much for StitchCon and all of a sudden I realized huh, our stitching meetup is this Saturday. I get to go stitch with people. I'm so excited. So now I have to plan what I'm gonna take with me to the stitching meetup. I don't know whether to take something I'm not taking with me to StitchCon or whether to take something that 
you know, I can get further along. Um, I'm, I'm sort of tempted to take one of my um, present pieces that I need to work the most on. Um, so I might do that, but I'll share it with you and uh, I'll tell you about it when it's done. In the meantime, until then, happy stitching everybody. Good night. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. Today is June 20th. It's a Thursday and it is my wedding anniversary. <laughs> so my husband and I went out for a lovely lunch at a local restaurant here. Um, it had a wonderful time together, a delicious meal, and um, just talked and reminisced and just enjoyed each other's company. And it was a lovely day. Then, when we got home a little bit later on, after a few chores and things that we needed to do together, an errand or two, I settled in and I uploaded my uh, video today. Um, a compilation of several days of uh, Magical Stitches homework and 24 hours of cross stitch, and it was a long one. So, I saved the um, stash die for this video and you've seen it already and I hope that you found some nugget in there that you may have enjoyed and I hope you'll share with me some of the things you do to keep your stash organized and then I went into my whips and I looked to see what was one of those whips that I wanted to get some work on before I leave town and um, that I won't be taking with me as I've discussed before and one of them is friends and this one's not going with me not because it's big but because the chart's hard to see it's hand-drawn and it is uneven at times and so I don't always find it the easiest chart to read so I need to be concentrating on it and I'm just afraid if I'm visiting and talking that I won't be so since I worked in the same area that I worked in last time and just completely filled it in, I think I should put in a picture for you to help you see the difference. So I'll put in a picture right here of where it was when I started today. And now I'll show you how far I got. So I worked hard at it, but unless you're paying attention, you may not be able to tell what I did. I filled in all the rest of this. There were a lot of open um, streaks through here where there was just one shade darker brown that was used. And then there was an entire row of two different colors through here that I filled in in the bottom. Now there is still two more colors to go in here above their head. But I just got this uneasy feeling today. I was gonna finish all of that out and let that be the end of my stitching. But then I decided that this little doll's head is here. Her hair is just starting here. I think I would like to go ahead and do the top of her head and make sure I have them in relationship to each other the way they should be and have them placed as the focus you know, where because they're the focal point in this whole picture before I finish the background because I can fill in the background to fit if I need, you know, if I've made any counting errors at all. I can make sure that the two dolls are fitting in there together correctly. I always try to look for ways to do that to make sure if I've made any sort of error and have to fudge anything at all that I'm fudging in the background if I can and not on the piece itself. The main focus of the piece. So that's where it is, friends. And I am hoping <laughs> that I'll get to work on it again um, some more. Uh, maybe in the month of July, I was thinking of doing a totally Christmas in July, but this was hope, hopefully going to be a Christmas present. It probably won't be. It may wind up being a birthday present the next year. 
or the Christmas the next year. I don't know. This, this full coverage takes a long time to stitch. So that's where we are and that's what we've been doing. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Friday. It is June 21st and I am here to share with you a new start. I have um, started a new piece in a stitch along today with two lovely people that I have met online and we are um, starting this on the same day together and uh, you can follow our progress with a hashtag if you like. It's called Christmas Tea 2019 and this is the pattern. Oops, sorry. <laughs> this is the pattern we're starting. It is a Brenda Gervais and it is absolutely adorable. So I've, um, I've already posted once on, on Instagram today of my progress and then I just couldn't put it down and I stitched a little bit more. So this is where I've gotten to on my new start. Isn't this adorable? Look at that little mouse. This is just a scrap. It's 32 count. It's an even weave, and I don't know whether it's lamb's wool or just an ivory even weave, but I love it. And even the white is showing up well on there, but I love the muted colors. I'm, I'm not using all of the call for colors because I didn't have them in my stash, and I am trying to stitch from stash as much as possible. So I will uh, post my conversion when I finish it in the drop down box when I show it to you, but I just love it. That is great progress for a start. And um, I actually may get some more work on it because I have a stitching meet up tomorrow. And I have two pieces I'm thinking about taking with me. One is the needle's eye. I would like to get more outlining done on all of the dress parts throughout the whole thing. Um, because I think that is something I might be able to finish at StitchCon. And then I'm thinking of taking this one with me tomorrow to get even more work done because what I would like to do is I would like to finish stitching the leaves that are here so that I can outline this beautiful cup for the tea and then I can use StitchCon time to fill that in. And even if I didn't get to do the other mouse, I would have the biggest bulk of the block stitching, you know, done there. And right now I have most of the, I have all the leaves on this side. There's one branch in here that has about three leaves on it. And then the rest are on this side. But if I work on that at my stitching meetup tomorrow, I might could get that done. So I'm really seriously thinking about taking it with me. But I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. So again, Anne, thank you so much for this pattern and I will pass it along uh, again once I have stitched it. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina again and today is Monday. It is the 24th. Of June and I have been busy stitching. I've met two prompts so far. Um, I have met um, the one prompt that asked us to stitch on um, something that had to do with a young woman who apparently um, appears as a ghostly figure. This is in Cheryl McKinney's group and she's always seen holding a red rose and for my uh, compliance with that prompt I said it's not a rose it's a cherry blossom from the cherry blossom tree and here's what I used for that beautiful red color that um, hot pink reddish color there and I wanted to stitch on this piece because it had the red flowers in it this is where she gets the flower from that she's seen holding um, so I wanted to share my connection again to remind you and this is my progress. Interestingly enough, I hadn't planned on this. This is one of those fortunate events. 
but I pull this out and I look to see what would be best to stitch on it and I decided that I was gonna stitch on part of the tree and this is how that goes I tried to fold it so you wouldn't have a lot of fabric hanging around but I did all of this gray in here and as it turned out it was enough gray to more than meet the prompt in the School of Magical Stitches for stitching on something with black or gray. So as soon as I had enough stitches for both of those and ran out of my last thread, um, you know, string of floss, I decided I'll stop there and I'll move on. So the next prompt I decided to meet was the one where we were told um, uh, that Harry had given his winnings to the twins so they could open a joke shop. And so we were to stitch on something that makes us laugh. And I think you'll recall that I have said this more than once, that this piece here, Jumpin' Jack Frost, makes me laugh. It tickles my funny bone. And so I pulled this out because I'm not taking this one with me to StitchCon either, primarily because I have it already on a scroll rod and I don't want to break it all apart and take it with me. So this is where I've gotten to on Jumpin' Jack. I did, you can work on anything in the piece. It's just work on the piece that makes you laugh. So I came in here and I filled in the cheek and I went ahead and did the back stitching for the face, just that little bit of face that outlined his eye, nose, and his mouth. And I back stitched the hand just because I wanted to go ahead and finish him and start working my way down. Because as you can tell, I need to roll this up again. Then I came over and I did this leaf and these leaves over here. Uh, even the back stitching on the stems, which are very uh, small, single strands, um, and got all of that done. And I did enough stitches to hit the prompt. In fact, I did more than enough. Uh, to hit the prompt. Uh, we w had to do 100 and I did 174, I had to check. <laughs> um, so I've done more than enough uh, to do that. Uh, so that prompt has been met and I'll be posting that today in the School of Magical Stitches uh, um, posting for that event. And uh, I am so thrilled that I get to scroll this down next time I start working on it. I'm really, really excited. So now I'll be getting down to uh, a slower progress because if you can tell, now I'm getting down to the meat of it. This is all sort of easy peasy up here, but this is solid. This is where I'm headed. So I'm right in here. I've got his boots to do, the stem here, this leaf and those two words. And then I start in all this. Ho! Oh. Anyway, I hope all of you are enjoying your stitching. I hope that you've started your week off with a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina, and today I am doing the random number generator to draw for my four winners of my 4,000 subscriber celebration. So I'll remind you of what we're going to be looking for and tell you how many people we have on the list for each one. And then I'll flip the camera around and do the random number generator um, each time. So um, this may look a little choppy because I'll have to stop and cut it back and forth uh, to show it to you. But uh, It'll make a little more sense, I think, that way. Um, okay, the first package that we're gonna do the random number generator for is the Lizzie Kate. And if you'll recall, this is my to-do list by Lizzie Kate and a little gray hair by Lizzie Kate. So these are the two patterns you'll be getting in this uh, drawing. So let's generate the number. Okay, here's the random number generator. 
and uh, we are drawing for Lizzie Kate. And I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, there were 76 people that were interested in Lizzie Kate. So we're gonna change this number right here. To 76. From one to 76. And now we'll hit generate. Number 26. So number 26 is Deanna Ellett. Deanna Ellett, you have won the Lizzie Kate. Congratulations. I'll put a comment on your comment, but if you would uh, email me at my email address in the box below, I will be able to mail this package to you. Congratulations, Deanna Ellett. Okay, now for the second package, it's a Teresa Wentzler package and it is Romeo and Juliet and it is the Lady of Shalott. There with her needlework. Isn't that beautiful? So we will look at this grouping and I forgot to tell you last time before I did the random number generator how many people had requested that one but for Teresa, um, the Teresa Wentzler group There were 59 that requested to, to be uh, in the drawing for that. So let's do the random number generator and let's see who gets it. Okay, there were 59 that were interested in the Teresa Wentzler package. So we will generate number 18. Sheila Norwood. Sheila Norwood, you are the winner of the Teresa Wentzler package. Congratulations, Sheila. If you will put your mailing address in an email to me, my email address is below, I'll be able to send this package to you. Congratulations. This is exciting. <laughs> okay, our next one that we're drawing for is the sampler. And this is by Ann Sandals, an antique reproduction. And uh, it's an Adam and Eve type sampler. And it comes with the hand dyed floss. So there were 102 of you that were interested in this one. So that tells you a little bit. Uh, about how much we like our samplers. All right, let's pause now. I'll turn the camera around and we'll draw for the winner. Okay, moving right along. There were 102 that were interested in the sampler. 102 of you. So let's see who the lucky winner is. Number 91. 91 is... Stitchin' Noni. Stitchin' Noni. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. You have won this beautiful sampler. So if you'll do the same thing, if you will please email me your mailing address. In my email address is in the box below. Then I'll be able to send it to you. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. Okay, here we go for the last one. The last one is the Teresa Wentzler package. It is my pattern that I'm passing along to you. It is pristine clean. I have not marked on it. It looks brand new. And there were 68 of you that were interested in Teresa. So let's draw for her and let's see who the lucky winner is. Okay, this is the last one. This is Nantucket Rose. There were 68 of you interested in her. And um, again, I would like to um, remember this time to correct a statement I made. I think I originally said that she was a Mirabilia pattern. 
and a couple of you were kind enough to remind me that she's a lavender and lace. So if you're not the lucky winner and you're looking to find this pattern, you'll need to look under lavender and lace, not Mirabilia. Sorry if I've confused anybody. Okay, there were 68 that were interested in her. Let's see who the lucky winner is. Number 31. 31. So number 31 is Deborah Butler. Deborah Butler. So Deborah, if you will, Send me your email address. It my I mean send me your mailing address. <laughs> my email address is below, and I will be able to send this pattern to you. Congratulations, Deborah. Congratulations to all the winners, and thank you everyone for participating. Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Dina and I'm here to give you an update. I have been working diligently on my homework for the School of Magical Stitches. I've also been using as much of that work as I can to meet prompts in Cheryl's 30 minutes a day uh, Facebook group as well. And so I wanted to share with you what I had worked on. I was able to meet five of the six prompts um, for the Harry Potter homework so far in the last uh, two days, Monday and um, today. I have one left to do and I'm gonna try to get it done before I go to bed tonight because I leave for um, StitchCon and I may not have really a lot of time to do it after that. I do have several more prompts, five more to do in Cheryl's group. Fortunately, they're all on pieces I'm taking with me, and so as I stitch on them, I will be able to post as I meet those prompts. But I wanted to get my homework done first, as I've said before, because, you know, it's a group effort, and I wanna do my part. So for the prompts in Harry Potter, I had already told you that I was gonna work on the uh, broderie a pari uh, for a couple of them and I have already shown you the happiness and the jumping jack frost that I had used for two of the prompts um, so I was able to hit two more today or three actually and those three were we were to stitch a hundred stitches on something that looked like it was a, a graveyard or a tombstone and so I started out with this right here. I did the two birds and the head, the writing on that tombstone and all the surrounding um, colors to make it look like a tombstone. And then I'll wait and fill it in at StitchCon. And then the next prompt that I had to work on was uh, to stitch on something that was um, a uh, that somebody helped you with uh, because Harry Potter's mother and father appeared you know to him and so I came on down at that point and I stitched this box and I did my charted initials but I scooted them over just enough room to put my middle initial in for DJH um, it's not perfect but it works it works okay for me it's got it all in there and then I started on this little vine, which I was gonna use for the next prompt, and I just went on it until I got enough stitches. And then the last prompt was to stitch on one of the ingredients to make polyjuice, um, the potion that allows the uh, students or the person who's drinking the potion to turn into um, or look like a person that they're trying to resemble and take the place of or impersonate. So I went on Google and found out what the ingredients were and one of them was a flex weed. So I felt like this, 
flower across the bottom here looked like a weed to me. And in fact, in Cheryl's group, there was a prompt uh, that I was to stitch on about a lady who died eating poisonous berries. So I used that same section because I said these, which will be filled in later with that background color, those are berries and they're the poisonous berries that she ate. And so that's how I met her prompt. So all in all, I wanna back up a little bit and let you see the Broderie uh, Paris. It's really coming along. I have one large motif left. This will be finished. It will go all the way across. So I actually have probably two repeats left. I'll show you what a repeat would be. It would be two sections like this. So I have one here and one here to get to the end. Then there's one more motif that's large, and it's this box here with the little side over here. And then everything else is just fill in. So this one's going with me on the trip. I don't know if I'll, you know, how soon I'll pick it back up again, but because uh, I've done a lot on it today and yesterday. So I just wanted to, to share that progress with you and I'm really happy now because there's a border of just a single stitch that mirrors this up here uh, that will go all the way around, which will be easy stitching at StitchCon. And then filling in this whole box, just solid stitching, uh, will be easy enough. And then I can go in and fill in all of the background uh, lighter colors in the areas um, in this border, this whole square is filled in that way, and behind the initials is filled in that way if I decide to fill it in. And all these berries are filled in that way. So there's plenty of easy stitching as far as, you know, not hard to count and easy to keep up with, that sort of stuff. So that is my progress on that piece. I thank you for letting me share it with you. Um, I actually stitched 600 and 49 stitches in this today. I did more than that because I didn't count the back stitching. There's a single line that's back stitched all the way across here and I did single stitches all the way across. I didn't even count those. So if I had, it would have been over 650 stitches in this one piece today. So I'd say that's a very productive day. I hope you guys have a great time. I think that Probably this will be the wrap-up for this video. I have a couple of things I'd like to put at the end if it's not too long. One of them is a beautiful picture that my husband took on one of his recent hikes. It was in, a, uh, in Georgia, in North Georgia, and um, he just sent me a picture of what he was looking at and it was so pretty. I wanted to share it with you. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you is a little tiny clip of our yard and it's um, I'm standing in our garage looking across our driveway to the side yard and this very young buck is having his lunch and I was so shocked to see them because this was this was out you know in the morning but mid-morning like 10 30 uh, it was not when I'm used to seeing deer. I'm used to seeing them in the early morning and late evening. But this little fellow was hungry, I guess, and he had a friend with him, another young buck. They must be brothers, and they haven't separated yet. But it's precious, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, we thought we had deer because all of our flowers have been eaten um, systematically. <laughs> so except the gardenias, they don't like those. Um, but today we actually got to stand and see them and they were not the least bit afraid of us. Um, my husband was actually talking to the deer, you know, uh, warning them he was about to cut the grass and he was gonna start an engine and he was gonna scare them. And you know, of course they had no idea what he was saying. But even his voice, just him, you know, he wasn't yelling at them. He was just talking as if he was talking to me, but 
uh, it didn't scare them away and they were so lovely. So I ran in and got my phone and I took a little video of them and I just wanted to put it here um, for you to enjoy and just think this is, you know, I've seen some of you post pictures of deer in your yard and so now this is the first time I've actually captured deer in my yard. Let's hope I don't find any other critters in my yard. I don't want to capture a bear in my yard. That would not be good. <laughs> I am um, almost giddy with excitement for leaving for StitchCon, and I hope that I get a lot of opportunities to meet people there, and I hope I get a little stitching done too. But most importantly, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone that I can. So if you see me, um, you have the advantage of seeing my face on here, and I may not have seen yours if you're not a floss tuber. And I may not have found you yet if you are, so please tell me if you are, and let me get a chance to uh, make a list of all of you that I haven't seen yet, and, um, and go check you out, your, out your channel and get to know you better. So in the meantime, until we talk again, when I get home, happy stitching everyone.